following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Arcanum number 16, Fragility. The tower that is collapsing, this is the Arcanum also core called the Tower of Babel. We are really arriving at uh, the point in which we had to explain about the fall of humanity in detail in order to understand this arcanum <coughs> related with the letter Ayin which, as you already know, written in the website, is related with the eyes, with the divine sight. With that divine sight, which is related with all the powers of the human being. When we talk about the divine sight, we have to understand that this is not only related with the power of clairvoyance, but the divine side is that power that allows us to see in a broad way all of that which is in relation with our inner being. We will say it is the power of understanding or knowing our own particular being. Because many times, in many lectures, we explain that the only reason, the only objective, the only goal of creation is for the being to know himself. And this is why creation exists. So, in the universe, <coughs> there are many levels which are attained in relation with the knowledge of oneself. The knowledge of oneself is the knowledge of the being, which is, of course, an army of children. An army that in uh, Hebrew language, in Kabbalah, is called Elohim Zabaot. This is how Kabbalah explains the multiplicity of the unity. These children, or parts of the being, all of them, have, of course, different attributes duties that they have to perform, powers that have to be developed. 
and all of them coincide with one another. When uh, somebody acquires that development of all of the powers of his inner being, his own consciousness, this person has developed diamond soul. Because the diamond soul is uh, the consciousness which is being developed with the experience in creation, with the experience in the universe. So the being is knowing himself, developing that, and in that development is acquiring divine sight. That divine sight is what we repeat is called Ayin, the letter Ayin. The way in which we can see God or the way in which we can understand and comprehend our own particular individual monad in relation with the universe. And that's the only objective, reason, goal of being uh, created or of creation, to acquire that. In the development of this objective reasoning, we have stated many times in other lectures that there are six degrees. And these six degrees are related only with the direct path. Because while we are rising initiations, degrees of development through the tree of life, We are then entering into the different worlds that are described in, in Kabbalah <coughs> with the four worlds, starting with the bottom, which is Asya. Then the, the second, from the bottom to the top, is Jethira. The third is Bria. And the fourth is Atsilut. These four worlds are described in the man of the Sohar. Of course, Adam Kadmon, the man of the Sohar, that has his feet uh, on the earth, one foot is on land and the other is in the sea. And then the we find that the solar system is in relation with the world of Yetzirah, having the solar or the sun, the center of the solar system, in his sexual organs, and all the planets rotating around the sun. Above that, we have the zodiac, which is related with a galaxy in which the person or the consciousness of the initiate when reaches that level of Bria at the top of, uh, of, of the heart in relation with the chest is developing all the powers related with the world of the macrocosmos the galaxy and above it we have the head which is of course related with Atsiluth this head is called uh, Arikamping, the vast continents, which is related with the infinite. Many times we state that the infinite is related with many galaxies. The knowledge of many galaxies. While the macrocosmos, which is below the infinite, below the head, of this man of Sohar, Adam Kadmon, is related with any galaxy. In this case, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is called a microcosmos, related with the world of Bria. And down below, the solar system is related with the world of Jetsira. 
uh, and in the very bottom, the Earth, which is the mass of cosmos. Because the solar system is called Deftero Cosmos. Each system has its own name. Beyond the head of Atziluth, beyond the head of Adam Kadmon, we find the first cosmos, which is the Ains of Or, which is called the Protocosmos. Here we find an immortal type of matter, which is beyond the universe. And of course, beneath the feet of Adam Kadmon, we find Klipoth, as we know, which is related with the inferior nine layers, which Dante Alighieri, in his Divine Comedy, described very well. So this is how we have to visualize the universe, as a symbol. Because obviously we have to understand and comprehend that the man of Sohar that we are describing here is an imaginary symbol. It would be impossible to find a creature like that, gigantic, right, in any part of the universe. This is a symbol. Remember that one of the commandments of, uh, given by Moses states, you shall not have any, any image or symbol wherever and that's why ancient Gnostics, when they explain different things, they make symbols, which are not related with any image of any creature which exists in any part of the universe, under the sea or on the earth, whatever. Like, for instance, in the last lecture, the speaker was talking about uh, the Baphomet, which is a creature with a head of a goat, and uh, with an uh, androgynous body, and w whose phallus is the caduceus of Mercury, and has a, a, a feet of goat. You don't find that creature alive in any part of the universe. It's just a symbol in order to describe mysteries. That's the only way that uh, we can understand, because in Gnosticism you find a lot of symbols. And uh, also... The Bible described in, in the way that the stories of the Bible are written is in order to describe uh, also different uh, truths that uh, are hidden for the profane. And in order to understand, we have to learn what we are learning here, the meaning of all of this, in order to read and understand what is written. Because everything is related with numbers and with cryptic symbols, esoteric meanings. So that's why that men of Zohar is a way in which we see how Adam Kadmon is controlling the universe. And this is precisely uh, the way in which Kabbalah explains the Tower of Babel. Because the goal of any monad is to build that Sohar, men of Sohar, within itself. To have control on the earth, in the solar system, in the galaxy, and in the infinite. In order to become a cosmos human. Which is a creature that uh, soars in all of those dimensions, which are related to the tree of life. In Kabbalah, many times we stated that this man is symbolized with the four letters, the tetragrammaton, yod he vav he, which the right trans, uh, translation or the right pronunciation of the name is yod Hava. But also, we can pronounce it Jahava. Because uh, now, in this uh, Arcanus, we are explaining <coughs> that uh, the word Jah is related with Keter. And from that uh, word, is, uh, we repeat, 
It's how that uh, mantra, powerful mantra, when we pronounce hallelujah, we are saying praise Jah, which is keter. But the other part of the name, which is Hava, is precisely beneath in the earth. Because Asia, which is the world of action and matter, is a feminine sephira, feminine world, nature. And that's why always we uh, refer as uh, Hava, the queen, Eve, which is precisely where all of the attributes of God are placed. And when we say that in Asia, in Malkut, which is Hava, are placed all of the attributes or divinity related with Yetzirah, related with Bria and Atziluth and beyond. We have to understand that our physical body is precisely that. Because when we go to the earth, of course, we find in the earth those powers too. But the main thing is here the philosophical earth, which is the physical body, which is called also Asia. And uh, by understanding the physical body and the internal bodies is how we understand the work that we have to perform on the path of the self-realization of our own particular monad, the development of all the powers of our own particular Elohim, in order for us to be united and to return into the bosom of the Absolute, as a triumphant monad. In this case, the essence, the consciousness, has to work together with the monad, and the monad with the essence, with the consciousness, all together. Because the monad and the essence are one. This is something that we have to understand and comprehend. That's why on the path of the self-realization, the Master Samael on the Lord always states, the initiate has to work with filial love. This filial love means to feel that one is a child of God. To feel that one is a child of God is indispensable. But for that, we have to remember ourselves here and now and to live the present. Because remember that the devil, the ego, which we have within, is not a son of God. That, we will say, is an abortion of nature that unfortunately lives within each one of us. That's Satan that we have to annihilate. The child of God that we are talking here is that child, that son, that that creature, the essence that is within each one of us. That consciousness, that soul, which is an embryo, has to work and to reunite with the monad through the path of the initiation. On the path of initiation in which that essence, that monad, uh, or that soul, is reaching his monad little by little, is developing all the attributes of his own monad within his own consciousness and absorbed by the monad. And this is how the monad is knowing himself. So then, all of those attributes are placed in the physical body. It is stated that all of those attributes are 72 attributes that are explained with the name of God. Obviously, the first word of Atiluth is in relation with the letter Yod, which is the, has the value of 10. 
Then the next world of Bria, which is related with the letter Yod He, has the value of 20, uh, 15. Because Yod has 10 and He is 5. Yetzirah is in relation with Yod He Bab, which makes the addition of 21. And then in the very bottom is Asia where we find yod he bab he the word of action and matter, with all the powers of God are in action, that make the addition of 26. When we make the addition of all of this world, we find 72. Value. And that's why it's stated that God uh, uh, has 72 names. Remember that the name is in relation with the word the power of the name is the war itself. Powers that are within every creature and every monad, but in a state of potentiality. And all of those powers are placed in potentiality in the physical body. That's why it is necessary in every creation to reach the level in which we are right now the fourth round in order to play there all of the attributes of God in every creature. That's why it is stated in Kabbalah that the foundation of the tower of Babel has 72 pillars and 12 doors. And it's round. If you see that, you understand that the circular, the circular uh, aspect or the round aspect of this first statement, Kabbalistic statement, is referring to the world of Asia. In which the Auroboros is giving the energy and is rotating and all of its power in potentiality in the 72 pillars which sustains the foundation of this Tower of Babel. Of course, it's Tower of Babel because if we don't put it in activity, all of those powers, it is, it, the man of Sohar doesn't come. Whether we create the man of Sohar or whether we create the Tower of Babel, you see, here we find the two opposites. Tower of Babel, the opposite is the Sohar, the men of Sohar, which is the cosmos, human, very well developed. So then we have that, of course, the 12 doors of that base of the Tower of Babel are the 12 zodiacal signs. Or as we will say in, in symbology, the twelve tribes in exile in the world uh, uh, in Egypt. Remember that the twelve tribes of Israel went to Egypt, which is Mazarim, the world of matter, the world of Asia, the planet itself in the three dimensional world. All the souls of every monad enter into this physical world to any of the twelve doors. Because we are being born in different signs, so they call signs. And of course, now we have the physical body here. We have the 72 attributes in potentiality. If we make the addition of 72, we have the number 9. So here you see again that the ninth sphere is related with this. Everything is in potentiality, of course, in Nun, the essence of God. The sexual energy, the sexual matter. But in order to put in activity that, we have to know the secret of the Arcanum, the mystery of Adam and Eve, which is related 
with the letter Ayin. If you visualize the letter Ayin carefully, you find that is the letter Nun, opened. And Ayin, I mean Zayin, it is the other letter Zayin, which is in relation with the female aspect, the female force, is precisely resting on the very bottom of the letter Nun. But we have to understand that the letter Nun is the letter Bab with a foundation, which is Yesod. That means that all the forces of Yod from Keter descend to, through Bab, Bab and are placed in Yesod. But when you open the letter Nun and place that, the letter Zain, you are implying the activity of the female aspect in sexuality. And that's precisely what we always state. This is how we develop knowledge. If you uh, remember or if you inquire about the Hebrew letters or Kabbalistic letters, you will find that the letter Ayin is in the middle of Da'at. It's Dalet Ayin Tau. So that is in the middle of that, because that is the clue. It's in the middle, in between. And of course, here we find that the mystery of the letter Ayin or do, is, uh, uh, falls into Zayin, which is Eve. Because remember that Kabbalistic we said, Vav is Adam, the man. Zain is a woman in relation with a sexual force. So in order to put in activity all of those attributes which are in the physical body within the activity of Zain, the fem female, as female aspect of creation. In other words, we had to manipulate the sexual forces to control the sexual forces of Zain, to return them up in order to build or start building the men of Sohar. The second level of the Tower of Babel, according to Kabbalah, he said there was square and with nine storages. You visualize that, you understand that every human being, every person in itself, has four aspects. And those aspects are, of course, related with the nine sphere. The nine aspects, we will say that all the nine sephiroth of the tree of life are placed in Yesod. It says that nine stores, the storages. The square is related with the inferior quaternary. Because we are not only the physical body. Inside of us, we have the vital body, we have the Kamarupa, and the inferior manas, which is the mind. When we investigate any animal of the kingdom, we discover that they have also these uh, uh, vehicles inside. They have the physical body, as we have physical body. They have vital body, as we have vital body. They have body of desires, as we have body of desires, which is called in the theosophy, Kamarupa. As we have mind, they also have mind. The difference is that we have intellect, reasoning. While the irrational animal, they don't reason. Their mind is in a state of evolution. We are reaching this level in which we reason. 
So those are the four inferior bodies that any creature has for evolution. So if we investigate any person in this earth, they have that square within themselves. But also we know that the origin of these four bodies that everybody has is just so. That's why all of the powers that are within the four bodies are related with the ninth sphere. That's why we said it's place we find nine storages inside that square, which each one has the powers in potentiality of all the Sephiroth above Malkut. Because that is the tower, remember, that is built in the world of Asia, in the outside circle, outer circle of Samech, as we explained in other lectures. Because the interior circle is the kingdom of heaven. And the outer circle is the kingdom of the confusion of tongues. The three-dimensional world. But every human being has three brains. This is how the tower goes in building. That's why it is stated that the third level of the Tower of Babel strangular with 42 turns in that triangular structure. When I repeat that triangular structure referred directly to the three brains that each one of us has. Because we are called the three-centered beings or three-brain beings. And of course, in the three brains, as you know, we have the Bobby Caldens, or the Bobby Caldenuts, which are the vital values that are placed in each one of our three brains in order for us to sustain the tower. It depends. How long are we going to live? Because we are stating here is each one of us, each person in this physical world is a tower of Babel. This is how it is built. 42 is in relation with the 42 powers. It's in some Kabbalah it says that it's a name of God that has 42 letters. We will state is the power of the justice of God working to 42 powers. That's why in the ancient Egypt, they were always uh, honoring the 42 judges of karma. The 42 forces of the law that give accordance to the law to every, each one of us. This is the law, placing the three brains. Why? Because it depends how you use the three brains, how the law is going to be applied to us. Remember that in the website we stated that in order for us to reach self-realization, we have to learn how to work with three aspects, the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness, which are synthesized in Buddhism with upright thought, upright feeling, and upright action. The three brains. That's why the Buddha Gautama Sakyamuni taught that three aspects of the action in which the consciousness exert in the physical world. If our actions are upright, if our thoughts are upright and our feelings are upright, and then we are developing the Parlock duty of our being, which is the perfect transformation of all impressions, not only in the physical world, but in all the worlds of Kabbalah. When somebody reaches the self-realization of the being, it's because this person is acting 
with the paloglutia of the being, the perfect transformation of all, with the consciousness. But unfortunately, we are not doing that. But this is the path. That's why, in order to control these 42 powers, which are acting against us, because it's the power that balances, that controls, that equilibrates the cosmos. And that power works in us through the three brains. It couldn't be another way. Because through the three brains is how we act, think, and feel. And here you find the meaning of all the doctrines, of all avatars, of masters, that always teach us how to control the three brains. Comes into my mind the first commandment that is stated to us, the consciousness that is bottled up in the Tower of Babel. If we want to reach the level of cosmos human, the KH, the level of Sohar, Adam Kadmon, and then we have to love our own inner God with all our mind or understanding, with all our heart or emotional feelings, and with all our strength, which is always referring to the energy that moves the matter and gives action to the physical matter and even to the internal bodies. That is the sexual energy, the instinctual energy, and the emotion. Because here in the sexual, instinctual motor brain, we have three centers, which are related with the strength. Remember that in this physical world, when somebody wants to use his strength, it has to be in movement. Any action related with motion is in relation with the strength. Sports, for instance, that is in the nature, are very popular, are related with the motor center. But there are certain sports that are related with the instinctual center, like, for instance, karate, kung fu, or boxing. That is instinctual and motor at the same time. That is the strength of the body. And, of course, the other way is sexual action. Or the sexual act, <clears throat> in which we use also the strength, the energy or that mot uh, motor instinctual sexual brain. But also we use the emotional. That's why Moses stated, you have to love your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your strength. Sometimes he said with all your soul. But remember that the soul that he's talking to is about nefesh. That nefesh which is related with different centers. In this case with a sexual center, instinctual center, motor center. That's to love God with all your soul. Of course, that means that you have to put in activity all your energy for your God, for your monad. But that is a process of right thought, right feeling, right action. And of course, this is how they initiate through the fires of Christ, because without Christ, which is an energy, which is a force that we have to control and storage within ourselves, that energy is cleaning, transforming us to the 42 turns around this triangle of a structure. Because we have a lot of karma. And each of the judges of, the, of karma is always pointing at us. If you read the 42 uh, negative confessions in the Egyptian book of death, of the dead, I mean, right? The book of the dead. He's there in the Master Samael also wrote that in one of his books. That he says that finally after many ordeals and many works, psychological works in his ego and initiations, Finally, he was before the 42 judges of karma, pronouncing the negative confession. And he has to face every judge and says, 
the name of the judge says, I didn't do this. And in order to say that, I'll say, for instance, before the judge related with the sexual force, I never fornicated. In order to say that, you don't have to have any atom of lust within you. Because if you said, I never fornicated, and still you have only one psychological aggregate within you of lust, you are a liar. Then the judge who says, you are not, you are pronouncing it right. But when, it, when you said that, the judge look at you, because they are awakened beings. Their sight, the divine sight is awakened. You see, this is a yin. They see within you. And he says, you're right, you never fornicated. Because he's seeing your being. And he's seeing he see no single atom of lust within you. And then you face another judge. And you says, I never kill. And then the judge says, there, you're right. You have no ego of killing or hatred or anger within you. So you're clean. You are forgiven. And then you find. So judge by judge, you have to pronounce, I never did this. But only, that's why this is, this is the, the negative confession for the dead. But we are alive. If we want to pronounce that confession before the judges of karma, they will kick us out. Say, so, are you joking with me? You don't can pronounce even one confession. Right? And that's the power, the 42 judges, the power of the law. And that's why we are saying we are entangled in the Tower of Babel, and these 42 turns that goes around the triangle. Blessed with our three brains. But of course, with the help of Horus, Aurus, the son of Osiris, or Christ, or whatever you want to name, the Lord, the cosmic Christ, incarnated, is how the Bodhisattva can reach that level. How to defeat Mara in order to reach that level. And then he can resurrect in order to enter into the world of Bria. Well, this is a statement also that the Tower of Babel, after that uh, triangular structure with 42 rounds, has a cylindrical construction that has within 72 storages. We say, how? Of course, we are reaching here the head. Or we will say, the cerebrum spinal nervous system, the throne of God. Cylindrical, meaning the spinal column. There you find the 72 aspect of God developed. Nobody can develop the 72 aspect of divinity within without the power of the fire. All the great cosmo creators have that power developed. That's why it is stated that those storages, which are 72, in that cylindrical construction, are united or joined to each storage to another with seven staircases. That reminds us of called the seven powers of the being, the seven churches that we had to develop in the spinal column. Because that staircase, the seven uh, staircases, are related, of course, with the power of the spinal column. And which you initiate has to unite earth and heaven, heaven and earth, within himself, in order to make the men of the Sohar the Adam Kanmon, the cosmos human. And uh, the 72 powers developed there in the world of Atiluth, which is the world of the Logos, the world of Keter, is given unto the initiate the complete development 
of objective reasoning. So we hold here and visualize that. That objective reasoning is a top of that. In which you acquire that divine sight. And when you see and comprehend all of creation within you. Not that you read it in a book. Not that you discuss it that once in a while. It's that you visualize, you see that within you. And then you become a self-realized master. The levels of those objective reasoning in Buddhism are related with the three kayas. The Dharma Kaya, the Samboga Kaya, and the Nirmana Kaya. Related with the three primary forces. Ketejo Mabina, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This type of humans are precisely made into the image of God. With objective reasoning. But of course, if we go down here, because we have those 72 attributes, but in potentiality. And instead of having them as a cosmos human, as Adam Kadmon, what do we have within? We have Nimrod. It is funny that in some parts, many people, in order to point somebody that is stupid, it says Nimrod. Nimrod is really the intellect. It's subjective reasoning. Nimrod is alive. Within every human being is the intellect itself. Subjective reasoning. Which is the outcome of evolution. Mechanicity. That Nimrod, it is stated in the Bible... That was a powerful hunter. A powerful hunter before Jehovah. Or the holy name yod heh bab -He. Meaning that mechanically using the attributes of powers of the energies of the body, of the four bodies, in order to develop subjective reasoning. Because the mind, the intellect, is the one that is always hunting for titles, hunting for pride, hunting for being better than the others. And this is what this world is. Each one of us is a hunter. Each one of us is a nimrod. And all of this, as this is stated symbolically in Kabbalah, is built by a great architect of the Tower of Babel, whose name is Faleg, which reminds us the Phallus. Because really all of the powers of creation, whether for the Tower of Babel, or whether for the cosmos human, the man of Sohar, is in the Phallus. It depends how we use it. So that is Faleg, and that is Nimrod. The king of the Tower of Babel. So let me tell you and understand that that Tower of Babel is not something from the past. It's of actuality. It exists right now. Each person in this physical world is a Tower of Babel. So that's why this society is in confusion. Because each one of us is in confusion. Nimrod think that by believing in this or by believing in that, he's going to reach heaven. The powers of the Aesop, the powers of the Absolute, that descend from above through the tree of life and that are placed in Asia, descend in Asia and see, let's see what the children of men had, had built. 
and they came down into this society, into this civilization. It says, oh, it's just a tower of bubbles. This is what it is. Tower of bubbles. And if you are, it's confusion. Following this, following that, nobody knows that in order to be out of that tower of bubbles, we have to go inside and to build the cosmos human, the psychological man. And that's precisely the son of Nun. Is Yeshua. As you see, for instance, there, it's in, written in the Bible, that when the Israelites left Egypt, Mazarim, and entered into the, into the promised land, we were going to conquer the promised land, Moses disappeared. And the one that follows and starts talking with God and following the directions of God is Yeshua, son of Nun. Yeshua means Savior. Nun, of course, as you know, is related with a sexual force. Meaning that that energy starts developing inside of you the cosmos human, the objective reasoning. The reason for existing in the universe. But subjective reasoning cannot mingle with objective reasoning. So subjective reasoning has to collapse. And that's precisely how the buildings, how the walls of Jericho are destroyed by the power of the verb, the power of the word. It is written there in the Bible. They go around and they pronounce, or they blow the trumpets, and all the walls of Jericho fall, and they conquer the city of Ai, which is the eyes, the eye, the divine sight, objective reasoning. How few are those capable of doing that? Many people here, on the contrary, what they want and what they develop is a tenebral sight which only works in Klipoth. There are many black magicians, sorcerers, witches that have powers in Klipoth, not in the upper worlds. And they think that they, because they have powers in Klipoth, they have the power of the universe. No. Clipoth is hell, the infernos. And since they have power and work powers in hell in Clipoth, and because all of humanity is fallen into Clipoth, they control humanity. But we will say they control the ego of humanity, which belongs to Clipoth. Those black magicians, sorcerers and witches, cannot control the inner circle of the kingdom of heaven because there the devil cannot enter. And that's why it is written that we have to renounce Malkut in order to enter into the promised land, the land of Israel. One time, somebody told me, the word Ra in Hebrew means evil. Oh, well, I said, what about Israel? Is that evil in between? The thing is this, Ish is fire, and Ra is a solar force, and El is God. Israel is a fire that we have to transform and to put into the spinal column. That's a promised land, individually speaking. To enter that and to conquer that is to acquire power in the monad. No power in Klipoth. That's why this humanity is fighting here in this physical earth, trying to make their religion the best. And this is, humanity has to follow this belief. No. This belief, no, this other belief. This is the Tower of Babel. 
It doesn't matter what belief you have here. It doesn't matter what religion we follow. It's Babel. We have to follow inside and to develop the inner being, the inner man, the human being into the image of God. And then we realize that all religions have the same fundaments, same foundations. But humanity always mistake and think that that believing by fortifying Nimrod is how they are going to reach salvation. There are some Nimrod that believe in Jesus Christ. There are some Nimrod that believe in Moses. Other Nimrod that believe in Buddha. Other Nimrod that believe in Zoroaster. And every Nimrod has his own belief. Thinking that he's going to reach heaven. By beliefs. Because of evolution. Because of time. They know that Nimrod has to be annihilated. That Nimrod is called in the book of Revelation. The Antichrist. Because he's only concerned with the physical world. Christ is something related within. So the Antichrist Nimrod is in the head of everybody. So then we find... How the tower of Babel is developed. And that tower had to collapse. Little by little. We had to understand and comprehend. To develop the right. The cosmos human. And that's why you see that lightning there. Coming from above. Destroying the tower of Babel. And see you see two personages here which are collapsing, going down into the abyss, into cliff pots. And that's why in the bottom you see the staff of command that can be used in either way. And the, how you call the flail, the whip, the flail, that is in relation with willpower. And in each side you find the two serpents, whether you await the Kunda buffer or the Kundalini, whether you awake the tempting serpent of Eden, or you develop the serpent that healed the Israelites in the wilderness. This is the opposite, the two forces there. It depends if you want to develop the Sohar, the men of Sohar, the men into the image of God, then you have to do it through the serpent that healed the Israelites in the wilderness. Nahash. But if uh, you develop the Kundabafer, and then you become an Indrad, a king of your own tower, or you can control other towers too. Because there's some Nimrods there that have their people. And they, of course, they build their kingdom in Babylon. But Babylon is their own groups, their own societies. In the land of Shinar. But remember that also in the land of Shinar was instituted the sacred college of Eden, in which the sacred mysteries that we are talking here were taught for only those that knew how to destroy the Tower of Babel and to build inside the right thing. This is why you understand and you comprehend that when somebody reaches the tap of the civilization of the being, then he or she returns into the basm of the absolute, into the Ein Sof. Because remember that the Ein Sof is the origin of creation. When the universe disappeared, and then all the monas return into the Ein Sof. Those monas that are self-realized and return to the twelfth Ian, which is the Ein Sof, they are transformed into cosmo creators, into watchers, into logos. Monads capable of helping other monads in their future cosmic day. That's why in every cosmic day, self-realized monads appear as cosmo creators. They are not only capable of creating a human body, they can create a planet. But they acquired that 
through the self-realization. Other monarchs that are new enter into that cosmic day and are assisted by these cosmic creators in order for them to acquire the same level because that is the goal of the universe. All of us to reach the level. But those monarchs that reach that level have the duty of help the cosmic Christ. The cosmic Christ, the cosmic Christ is the ends of or is the light of the ends of that has in his, on his shoulders the responsibility of creation. His law is sacrifice. Because he sacrifices every cosmic day in every planet, in every solar system, in any galaxy, in order to give life and to help the monas to acquire Paramartha, absolute consciousness. Then you find that only those that follow the direct path are the ones that the cosmic Christ assist and use them in future cosmic days in order to keep his duty. They have the duty of helping the cosmic Christ, which is not a person, but a force, a cosmic force. And that's why the path of the cosmic creators is a path of sacrifice. The path of the bodhisattvas in which in every cosmic day they appear and sacrifice for this humanity. That humanity disappear and they appear in another cosmic day for another humanity. And like that, until the cosmic Christ says, you have been helping me through many maha mambantaras. Now I will take you to the Ain, which is the 13 Ian. You earned that. But you had to sacrifice. Now you had to renounce the omniscience, omniscience, and omnipotence. And this is how they enter into the Ain. Master Jesus of Nazareth, Master Abramento, enter into the Ain. But it was not like that. He sacrificed himself through many humanities, through many Mahamantanas. The Master Samael Onveor is a cosmo creator. But he has been sacrificing for humanity, many cos, uh, planetary humanities, through many Mahamantaras. And he says, now I will like, at the end of this Mahamantara, when the Pralaya starts, which is the cosmic night, I would like to enter into the 13th Ian, finally. But hey, he says, this is what I say, but I am only the sun. If I go to my father and says, I want to enter the 13th Ian, Keter will say, hey, what is that respect here? I am the one that gives the last word here. You want to enter there and you can go by yourself, but I don't. I want to sacrifice myself more for other planetary humanities. Then you have to understand and says that I am the inferior part of him, so I have to follow him. This is what I want, but he, what he wants is another thing. And he and I are one. Part of the monarch cannot enter and another part can live in the universe. No, can be left there. No. The whole thing has to enter. So everything has to be united in a harmony. So you understand that? What is the path of the cosmo creators? The spiral path is another thing. It's just for the Buddha's pratyekas that do not sacrifice for humanity. They may eventually enter into the absolute through many mahamamantaras, but as a simple monads. With knowledge, yes, but not of, with objective reasoning. That the bodhisattvas developed in the path of cosmic creation. That is why it is written that many bodhisattvas were sent to the planet Earth in the beginning of creation. You have to understand that all the monas from past cosmic days that reached self-realization have, have the duty of helping creation. And that's where they appear as angels or archangels. But in this case, because we are talking about fire here, which is in relation with the jinn, we enter in the wall of Hod. We talk. Stensely, in the last lecture, 
about the archangels or the world of God from the cosmic day called the solar cosmic day. Cosmic day of the, of the sun. These uh, cosmic creators are called in Kabbalah Beni Elohim which translation is the children of the Elohim, the children of the gods, the Bodhisattvas in other words. Why? Why there? Because the astral body, as you already know, is that body that is in relation with our own particular individual Jesus Christ. The astral body is that body, immortal body, that unites our physical personality with the supreme immanence of the solar father. Obviously, the Beni Elohim have mental body also and causal body. But they are placed within the inner Christ. And that's why they are called the Beni Elohim. The Bodhisattvas, in other words. And the Bodhisattvas of past cosmic days that reached self-realization, were sent to the earth in the beginning in order to help the creation of this planet. And they were the souls, we will say, of those first humanities that existed on the earth. And they came in order to help. Also, humanities that were, uh, were created in past cosmic days in the same planet, in the same Anima Mundi, we will say. The Master Samael on Veor stated, he says, My father sent me uh, to the planet Earth in the beginning of creation of this planet. I was sent to the planet in order to help and in order to learn as well. I was incarnated in the protoplasmatic race, in the hyperborean race, and in the Lemurian race. But not only me. Other Dhyani Bodhisattvas also were incarnated. What is a Dhyani Bodhisattva? A Dhyani Bodhisattva is somebody that reached the 12th Ian. And there is a Logos, a Cosmo Creator. Somebody that helps in different ways creation. That was stated there in Genesis. That at that time in Lemuria, when the daughters of men were being born. In other words, when Eve was taken out of Adam, because this is the same symbol. When you read uh, uh, in Genesis, you find that Eve was taken from Adam. But there's a single uh, statement there. But in this statement that we are talking, which is in the chapter 6 of Genesis, it's stated that the daughters of men were being born and they were beautiful. Those daughter of men, he says there, Adam, this Adam, in plural, have daughters, which were Eve, in other words. The division of sexes. We will say it in other ways. When humanity was divided into two sexes, there were beautiful women on the earth, which were the children, I mean the daughters of Adam, the daughters of men, as it says in the Bible. But if you read the Hebrew words, you won't write men like Ishim there. But you will find the word Adam, referring to the men of that epoch. So the, the daughters of men. And then the Beni Elohim, that we're talking here, the children of God, descended and took wives. And here is precisely the way in which we have to understand the different meanings. The children of God, the Beni Elohim, the Bodhisattvas, descend on the earth and they descend by taking a woman, by taking a daughter of Adam, taking a daughter of men. This is the mystery of Ayin, in which they initiate in order to teach in order to help humanity they descend and take a woman I mean they perform the sexual act 
But another way is in which the Beni Elohim, the children of God, descend. They don't descend, they fall. They fornicate with women. There are two ways. Because the Tower of Babel, the 16th Archonum, is showing us. Whether you descend or whether you fall. Of course, it's written that most of those angels of the any bodhisattvas or bodhisattvas of Elohim, cosmo creators, fell into fornication and became demons. Few of them helped humanity. To the letter Zain, they were helping. But this uh, the anybody Sabbath that fell didn't help humanity. They corrupted more humanity. A humanity that needed to be helped, they corrupted it. Some of those fallen angels are named in different books Belial, Baal, Andramelech, Moloch. And the biggest of all of them, the demon Jave, that intentionally many Kabbalists have mistaken with the name, with, with Jehovah. And we stayed in many lectures, in many books, that of course, when you use the Hebrew letters, you write Yahweh with Yod Hebav He, but doesn't mean that he is holy. His inner being is holy, yes, but he is a demon. The Bodhisattva fell, betrayed his own God. It's stated there in the Website that any fallen bodhisattva is accused of three crimes. The first is to the, the, I mean the assassination of his inner Elohim through fornication. So the demon Jabe, that intentionally is written in many Bibles as Jehovah, is a demon that betrayed his own Elohim, his own God, and became the boss of the Black Lodge, the boss of Klippoth. So do not mistake Yahweh with Jehovah, or Jehovah, or Jehovah. Many different things. This Yahweh is the one that has on his shoulders the degeneration of this humanity. He one that planned everything for the Black Lodge in order to corrupt this humanity. So then you find that all of those Dianis, or fallen Dianis of Lemuria, that the book of Enoch, for instance, they said that were a, a, a more or less 200 that fell in one day. But there were many, of course. Matthew Samael stated, there are many fallen gods that are walking there as any run-of-the-mill person. And they are, some of them that are punished because they dishonor the Elohim, dishonor the white latch, dishonor creation. And this is why this planet has a lot of karma. Many of them, of course, are helping like in the case of the Diani Bodhisattva, Samael on the Or. But most of them, they are still there in Klippoth, following the orders of Jave, of his plans. So this Beni Elohim is at that time, of course, Humanity was, uh, were Nephilim, giants, because the Lemurians were huge human beings that were on the earth. Since that time, uh, humanity is returning and returning into the will of Sansara. And after the falling of these Diani Bodhisattvas, in the time of Atlantis, they tried to reach divinity 
in the wrong way. As you already know, as we already explained, with theories or with beliefs, trying to conquer heaven or to enter into the superior worlds with a kunda buffer. But it's written that they were destroyed and defeated. But humanity has always helped, received help. The white lodge is always assisting even those demons in order to build them up, to pull them up, repented. But not all of them repent. Most of them are there in the, in the world of Kippah uh, with many followers that are lo- loyal to them thinking that uh, the world to come in the world to come there will be of course the new angels. The way in which the Tower of Babel works the fragility is that the souls that are in fornication, they descend, they fall into Klippoth and are disintegrated there. After their disintegration, they are sent again in the fourth dimension into the kingdoms of nature, mineral, plant, animal, and human. But not with wisdom, as a simple failures. They enter again, yes, into the world of Jehovah, which is the fourth dimension that we explain in other lectures very carefully. But as a simple elementals, one thing is to enter into the fourth dimension after the disintegration, after the law of entropy that equalizes everything with death. After that law takes over every soul, and equalizes everything, and the souls rise again into the fourth kingdom, into the fourth dimension, under the direction of the angels of Jehovah, as simple elementals. After, of course, at least a thousand years in Klippoth. But the other way is to enter into the promised land, which is not the way of Klippothic way, or the lunar way, it's the solar way, in which we disintegrate the Tower of Babel, with the powers of God, with the power of the initiation, in order to reach the different levels that we know, we are explaining here, and that we have to acquire, in order to get off from this uh, confusion in which we are. If you observe this present civilization that is spreading on all the five continents, or six, we will say, in which humanity live on, they are building again the Tower of Babel in community. This time the Tower of Babel is empty, and this world is hollow. And the top of that is the moon. Because through the intellect, Nimrod has created rockets that go up and down, as you know. And they want to conquer the space. They want to enter into other planets without respect Nimrod ignores that the space is controlled by superior laws Nimrod ignores that there are many cosmos human that patrol the space and that they know us very well as I there are many in the internet you find many Website that talks about the UFOs. Some people are skeptical and they think that this is just an imagination of Nimrod. But they don't know that 
the cosmic law comes in watch. Not only inside, but also outside. Because the cosmic creators are patrolling in the cosmic ships, the space. Not only of this solar system, of the whole galaxy, of the whole cosmos. It's an organization. The fact that this humanity is blind because he's fallen like Samson. As you see, uh, again, we recall Samson. After Samson, which symbolizes this humanity, and I remind you now there that Shemshan, Shemesh is the sun, the solar force in Aun and On, in the sexual energy. That Shemshan is each one of us, symbolically speaking. Fell because we identify with Dalaila. When I said this, it coming in, in, in the Bible it says that the, the women at that time that were the, the daughters of men were beautiful. But the way that they're described is they were Hana. Hana is a word in order to say delight, beautiful, pretty in Hebrew. From that comes the world of this angel, Hanael, which is the angel of love. But the opposite of Hana is Nahama, the evil beauty that we many times we always say Nahama, Nahama. The evil beauty. Samson, of course, fell into the evil beauty of Delilah, Lilith, the night, and lost his powers. If we call this Samson Abel, we will say, will be this Abel with knowledge. With that, but he fell and he lost his eyes, his ayin, and he became blind. Rotating in the will of Samsara through many reincarnations. And this is how we are, because of fornication with Delilah, with the night. Repeating that to many reincarnations, we are in exile. Ishmael in exile, in Egypt, in Asia, in Malkut. And we want to return. To return into the promised land, only Yeshua can take us there. So then you see that uh, this humanity is fallen. And we need to return by, by understanding that we are fallen. Some of us are fallen and forming the pentagram upside down, as you see there in the graphic. The legs up and the head below form the upside pentagram, which is a symbol of the goat of Baphomet. Down. This is a symbol here, for instance, that when you see Jesus Christ or many uh, pictures of Jesus with his three fingers up and the middle, I mean the annular finger and the baby finger fell like this. And the three, the thumb, the index and the middle up, that's the pentagram. The index is the head. The middle is one of the arms and the thumb is the other arm. And the two uh, fingers that are bent are the legs. That's the symbol of the pentagram. That when you find that in the right hand of Jesus, that means the upside pentagram, the symbol of Christ. While the opposite, of course, is that that we see here, which is a symbol that the hippie movement was using which is just the index and the middle, above, and the only three below, meaning the head and the arms below. And all say, oh, that's a symbol of the devil. Yeah, it's a symbol of the devil. That means that it is upside down. All, all the ones say, oh, no, it's the view of victory. No, that's a symbol of upside down pentagram. 
which many followers of the Black Lodge do. Like they do that, they, they, they do that. Like, see, this is upside down. This is positive. The three fingers up. Two fingers is negative. Simple things that you see there, and how the Black Lodge recognize each other by doing that symbol, that sign, which is the symbol of those souls that are falling, entering into the abyss. All of this humanity is related to the Tower of Babel. And is making this big society, this great civilization in which we are, is Babylon. Do you understand that? If Nimrod is inside of the head of everyone, obviously Babylon is here. Shinar is here. Babylon the Great, the mother of all fornications and adultery, is a whole humanity. It's not Iraq. It's America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Antarctica, and any island that is Babylon the Great, whose number is 666, is the beast. And the whore that is seated on top of that beast is humanity that holds a cup where all the abominations of the earth are there. The mind that is the cup of that whore. We will state this. If you clairvoyantly go there and see that symbol in the astral plane and you approach your nose to smell that cup or that whore, you will see that smells of alcohol. Because this is what humanity is also. Drinking alcohol everywhere. They celebrate everything with alcohol. The demon alcohol is in that cup of that whore. Vodka, rum, whiskey, Kalua, doesn't matter what you name it. You find that demon everywhere. Everybody in the Tower of Babel talks to Nimrod with a cup of alcohol in his hand. Whether he's a beggar or whether he's a king. Because those that are very refined, they drink special wine, special drinks. Right? But it's a beast. Of course, they are dressed very well, like kings and queens. But tossed into Nimrod, the great civilization, this great Babel, that is collapsing and will collapse. That's why when we hear people that say, oh, this civilization will reach other planets, they don't know that Atlantis civilization also tried because they also built the Tower of Babel. Every Nimrod there in Atlantis built a Tower of Babel. And they built also rockets. And better rockets than the rockets that we have in this present civilization were better rockets. And they were fulminated by the cosmic ray. It was written, Atlantis was destroyed in one night. The universal flood. But not any Atlantean in that epoch, when they were traveling, not only to the moon, because they traveled to Mercury, to Venus, to Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, which in this, and this time is impossible for us. They were all already tripulating at this time of Kali Yuga in Atlantis. And they knew other civilizations. But they were destroyed. Because they were trying to reach other humanities and corrupt other humanities. And the cosmic patrol do not permit that. But they are compassionate. They're trying to approach us. To help us. But there are many ignoramuses there that think that they are coming in order to conquer us. They don't need to conquer this planet. As I say in all the lectures. Why do you need to be a king of a mental hospital? You come into the mental hospital and feel pity 
And if you know some medicine, you want to help. But the crazy people there are mad. And they think that these doctors that are coming in cosmic ships want to conquer the earth. Because we are so beautiful. And this civilization, they want to eat us, they say. To make hamburgers with us. And you know, if you see all the Hollywood movies, you will understand that. The truth is this. They are compassionate. They want to help. But they respect our free will. They help us if we allow them to help us. Because nothing is by force here. That's why we are giving this knowledge to humanity. Take it. You want it. It's good for you. We are teaching how to get out from this Babel. But if you love Babel, if you worship Nimrod, and you want to stay here in this in this uh, Asia, in the wall of corruption, and to go into Klippath, into hell, after that, well, you are free. Because nobody can self-realize himself by force. It's impossible. We need to to kneel and to concentrate on our God and say, Father, if it's possible, take this cup out of me. But not my will, but thine be done. We have to unite our will with the will of God, with our own particular individual God. Not a God that is outside. Because God is not outside, he's inside. That is the God that we have to worship and to follow. And to respect the God or the neighbor as ourselves. Doing that is how we get out from this uh, Tower of Babel, working inside. And the brothers, the older brothers that come in the cosmic ships, the elder brothers that are already in the earth trying to help, they have the open arms. But you have to go and to hear and to practice what they teach, which is based on the three factors. Chastity. Scientific chastity. Transmutation of the sexual energy in the perfect matrimony. Second factor. Annihilation of Nimrod. Complete annihilation of Tubal Cain, Cain, the Antichrist, the devil, Satan, whatever name you want to give it to that entity that we have within. We have to annihilate it. For that we had to learn how to meditate, how to comprehend our own ego. And we had to sacrifice for others. To help others. But because love is a law. But conscious love. Comes into my mind in this very moment something that Jesus says. In the work. If somebody hit your right cheek, put your left. It's not literally, as many think, that if somebody uh, punch you in your face and say, okay, please, punch me now in my left. That would be stupid. The right cheek symbolizes the right actions that you do. Sometimes we help humanity. But believe me, we have received a lot of slaps in the face for the help that we're doing. Directly or indirectly. But we always put the left. Meaning, that we take that impression, we sit down and comprehend our own pride, our own selfishness, our own self-importance, our own self-esteem, vanity, all of that. And we put the left and show them that we are not perfect. We are teaching a wisdom that is not our wisdom. This is the wisdom of God. This doctrine is not our doctrine. We are just delivering something that belongs to the universe, to the cosmos. Somebody told us, well, you are talking about the Hebrew letters, and it belongs to the, uh, to the Hebrew, to the Jews. I said, no, the Latin letters are used by many people. It doesn't belong only to the Italians. The Greek letters are used also for the Russians. Not only the Greeks use that. The fact that in Israel, they speak the language, the Hebrew, and only they use this alphabet. doesn't mean that it belongs to them. This, this belongs to God, to the universe. And we have to study it. And to stop 
pointing that this belongs to this, that belongs to that. This belongs to the universe, to everything. And the, the Bible is written with that sacred alphabet, because the Hebrew alphabet is a sacred alphabet that belongs to humanity. That's why many Kabbalists study it. But also those secrets are in the runes, for instance, which is the runic alphabet. And this is why we, the Aryans, we have to learn there. But it's written that in the beginning of this root race, the children of the Aryans start learning the sacred doctrine. Little by little. And they stop being barbarians. That word is used by many people pointing at the people that are, uh, that, that, that are what do you call, uh, uncivilized. Barbarian. The word itself means children of the Aryan. That is a barbarian. And all of us are barbarians. In other words, the Tower of Babel is inhabited by barbarians. Because we are the children of the Aryan race. We have to stop being barbarians then we have to, go to become children of God to transform ourselves. And for that, we have to know how to transform the impressions. How to put the left cheek to show that we are not perfect. To love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But if somebody slap us in the face, we say, oh no, this is the only way, this is the, the, the only way and our, our science is perfect and you are imperfect. Then we are slapping the other in the face too. We have to respect the belief. People take it, okay. Doesn't take it, okay too. The other meaning of Jesus saying is, if your right eye make you fall, make you sin, meaning zain, because the right eye of the letter ayin is zain which is in relation with the woman or, or the way in which we transmute because the letter Zayin teaches you how to transmute your energy. On your path of transmutation of chastity, your right eye always makes you fall. Meaning that during the sexual act, during the moment in which you are transmuting Zahamaituna, sexual magic, you might have thoughts, your imagination, because remember that Ajin means divine sight. Your imagination, your fantasy puts you in your mind filthy things. Or you may see with your right eye uh, the neighbor and, and, and covet the wife of the neighbor, the husband of the neighbor, and that makes you to sin. So take that eye out of you. That is better that you are with that, that eye that to go to, to, to hell with all the body, is what the Master Jesus says. But to take that eye there, out of there, of course, you know, understand here that it's symbolic. Because uh, to take the eyes like that will be stupid. To take the right eye out of you means to transform that completely, perfectly. And to understand how to see women. You see? Because in order to see women as we, men, see, is negative. We are, uh, how do you call, uh, we always see women in a very uh, negative way. Pervert way. There are many women also that see men in a pervert way. They don't, they don't know how to transform. Because in order to see women or the women to see men in the right way, without lust, doesn't mean that you are going to have a bandage in your head, in your eyes, and don't see anybody. No. You have to learn. And you learn that through meditation. Master Samael says, if you look at my eyes, when he was alive, he says, and if you observe my eyes, you will see how I see women. He says, I educated my sight in order to see women. From the waist up. And not from the waist down. As many men do it. Perfectly. But he didn't learn that from one day to the other. He was meditating his lust. Until he learned how to see women in the right way. 
from the waist up, meaning without allowing the fires of the lower abdomen, which are related with Satan, with lust, with behemoth, and with all lustable things that we have in the lower abdomen, to see women in that way is to know how to polarize, how to transform the impressions from the waist up. And that's how to see with the right eye in the right way. Right transformation. No negative transformation that we are accustomed to. So you have to learn how to read the Bible. How to read the scriptures. This is something psychological. Everybody repeats. But in order to perform that, you need a lot of meditation and comprehension. Do you have questions? Okay. What is the question? What is the anima mundi? Anima mundi is a word, is a Latin word which means the soul of the world. Soul of the world. Anima mundi. It's the soul of the planet. We will say that the anima mundi of this planet was incarnated in the other planet that was called the moon, that now is dead. The anima mundi of the moon reincarnated, cosmically speaking, into this planet. And that's why this planet inherited the karma of the moon. Do you understand that? How the anima mundi is reincarnating? The anima mundi of this planet comes from the Saturnian epoch. That was the first incarnation. The second incarnation was the solar round, the third was the lunar round, and now this anima mundi is in this fourth round of four incarnation. How is the ayin, A-Y-I-N, related to ayin, A-I-N? What do you mean with the absolute? It might have a relation, but ayin, the absolute, is, is written with aleph. Well, ayin is written with ayin. Right? It's the eyes of God. It might have some relation, of course, if that they are positive. But those ayin can be false. You see? It is when, when Samson was identified with Delilah, with the sexual feminine force of Malkut, he lost his divine sight. And now we have a sinful sight. If I tell you we have divine sight right now, it will be a joke. Because if you observe the way in which we see, as I was telling you, women, that's just the beginning. What the Master Jesus says, you have here, of all times, that says you shall not commit adultery. And this is written for those that are following the path inside. You don't have to adulterate your path. But it is enough. For your eyes to see a woman in the wrong way, to commit adultery in your heart. I mean, to adulterate the fires of your heart with the action of seeing the neighbor in the wrong way. That's why you shall not covet anything on the earth. In order not to covet anything in the earth, you have to understand that the earth is maya. At the beginning and the end, illusion. Yes, another question? Can you explain more about the 200 Dhyani Bodhisattvas that fell in one day? Is this literal or symbolic? Symbolic, of course. Two is in relation with nature. Of course, there were many. If you read the Genesis of Enoch, you find there all of those, the name of all of those angels that fell. And that now, in this day and age, in this Kali Yuga, some of them are trying to rise again. And of course, all of them became demons. But when I said all of them became demons, I'm not talking about Keter, Homa, Bina here. We're talking about the Dhyani Bodhisattvas. You have to understand that. The fallen angels are the fallen Beni Elohim, the children of the God, 
which are the human souls of those beings. Because God is always perfect. The one that falls is the Bodhisattva, never God. He's always perfect. And on them fall the shame of degeneration. That's why all of those demons, their beings up there in the superior worlds are stagnant. They cannot go ahead because they are waiting for those souls to regenerate themselves, to annihilate the ego in order to keep ahead in their, their own development. The question is about Belzebub, that he was not a fallen angel. Yes, it's true. There are many uh, monads, or what we said, many consciousness, souls of many monads, that fell into the Black Lodge, into Klippoth, since many cosmic days ago. And they never saw the light. So they never uh, knew about the light, about the knowledge that we are teaching here. And they believe that the way in order to reach uh, uh, perfection is through the darkness of Klippoth, to the Kunda buffer. And one of them, of course, was Belzebub. That the Master Samael taught him and showed him the light, and now he is working in the white, in the, in the positive way. So he never knew. Now he knows. He never knew about the light. He thought, yeah, that evil was good. Because in this case, we will see, when you are awakening and you see not only this physical world, but the internal worlds, obviously you know that you are not like other people. There are many people that are skeptical here that they don't believe in anything because they think that only this physical world is what it is. But if you start awakening your consciousness and seeing there's something beyond and obviously, you, you like that because you are not like the common and ordinary people. You are developing your inner powers. That is good to awake, but not in evil. Because Belzebub was awakening and seeing all of the nine inferior layers of Klippoth. And then he thought that he was awakening. He really was awakened. But down there, not up there. As many of the other, they're, they're awake. They, they develop, we will, sca- we will say, they develop inferior powers. You see now that we teach, for instance, gene science. Jesus was walking on the Sea of Galilee by using the hyperspace, the fourth dimension. When you enter into the fourth dimension, you can enter into the sea and don't uh, be afraid of getting drowned because you can even breathe there. So anything can happen when you enter into the fourth dimension. But also the black magicians know how to enter into the fourth dimension. But they don't go up, they go down. Witches, sorcerers that fly in the fourth dimension. Which of course is something incredible for the skeptics. But for us it's something natural. I mean I know many of those individuals that are awakened in evil and for evil. And I respect them. Because they want to go there but they know the knowledge. They don't want to go up, it's their business. But Belzebub never knew about the light. It's not like other demons that know or knew about the light before. And they are down there because they love fornication. So most of humanity do not know anything about the light. At least we are teaching that intellectually. But we are giving the clues, the practices for everyone to see that. Everything is inside And if you don't know God within you, you cannot know God outside. Uh, Do you have another question? Thank you very much, and we hope for the next lecture, the 17th Arcanum. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, 
we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah, I'm